If you've ever found yourself wondering why your coloring pages just don't look as good as the ones you see online, today's video is for you. We're going to go through five easy tips that anyone can do that will help your coloring pages go from okay to amazing. These are simple tips. You can do them with any medium, with any type of coloring page. Let's jump in. Hi, I'm Sarah Renee Clark, and my goal is to help you learn to be more creative every day. Now, one of the biggest ways I love to do that is through coloring. And I know that not all of us are naturally creative people. We're not all born with just that knowledge of what looks good and what doesn't, or the ability to just use pencils to create masterpieces. But that doesn't mean that great art isn't within our reach. So in today's video, I wanna show you five tips that are very easy for anyone to use and they can help make your coloring pages look more amazing. Please remember to like this video, press subscribe and turn on notifications so that you'll find out every time I create a video like this. So the first thing is shading. Now, when I say shading, I know some of you might freak a little bit and go, oh no, shading, blending, light sources, that's too hard. Don't worry, what I'm gonna show you is not the full in-depth version. This is a very basic beginner's version. So for those of you who are the professionals who look at it and go, that's not how you pick a light source. That's not how... We're not talking about all that kind of stuff. We are just talking about a basic level of shading that can help make any coloring page look more interesting. So let's look at this coloring page as an example. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that around the orange areas, I've actually used a bit of a red just in here to create what looks like a bit of shadows. If you look at some of the blue areas, you'll also notice there's a bit of shadow with a darker blue and the same on the yellow. Now, when you look at this page from a distance, you don't even notice these, but there's just a slight more sense of depth compared to a normal coloring page. And it's because of these little shadows. Looking at this next coloring page as an example, here I've done a darker blue around all of the leaves with a lighter blue behind it. So again, it's not specifically correct in how shadows work, but it creates more interest in the image. And finally, in this image, I've actually used shading to create almost a bit of texture with these leaves. And I've used shading here to create a gradient effect on all the lettering. So if you look at the lettering closely, both the inside and the outside actually have a lighter color at the top and a darker color at the bottom and we've done a basic blend together there to create this gradient that makes the letters look way more interesting. So let me show you how we do this. So the first thing you wanna do is choose your colors. Now, when you're looking at a whole stack of yellows, it can be a little bit overwhelming to work out which yellows am I supposed to use if I want a dark yellow and a light yellow. So I like to use just a scrap piece of paper to swatch my colors to try and find two that look similar to each other but that are just slightly different. One looks a little bit darker or a little bit lighter, but looks like it has the same base color. So instead of just adding black, as you can see in this top example, the best way to do shading is to actually add a darker version of the same color. So in this instance, I've used yellow and I've used this yellow orange that I've got here. So these are very similar to each other. In fact, let me just show you a swatch of each pressing quite hard here so you can see there's not a whole lot of difference between these colors. Now when it comes to blending them together, we simply press a bit lighter and we overlap them. Now when you first start this, the best option is to go lighter and then come back and go over it again. So by working in light layers, you give yourself a lot more room to create a smooth gradient. And as you can see, that was actually quite easy to get the two colors to blend together just by doing multiple layers. Now, as you get better, you can press a little bit harder and ideally you wanna press harder at the end that's the full color and get lighter and lighter towards where you want the gradient to happen. So if we start again here and we go hard and we can go light as we get closer. The lighter you can do this transition, the better the transition will be. And even if you only have a small area to work with, you can still do this. So it doesn't have to be a big patch. You can still create a gradient with a very small area. 
Now, if you're wanting a more dramatic or more obvious look, you simply need to pick a bigger variety of colors. So use the same yellow, but maybe go more towards a darker orange or brown instead of the orange we've used. And this time we'll use a darker brown. Now you might be wondering why I've chosen brown when I'm working with yellow. Well, if we actually think about our color wheel and think about where yellow sits, a brown and even the orange are very, very close to the yellow. In fact, if you darken the yellow and add black to it, other than being a bit more gray, you will get very similar to this brown. So that's why I've used these. Now, quick tip, this is a lot easier with sharp pencils. So make sure you keep them nice and sharp and sharpen them regularly as you're working. Working with a blunt pencil, you won't have as much control over the gradient. So we'll do another example with the red. So again, we wanna press lightly. We don't wanna press completely hard, otherwise there won't be any room left to add the second color. And we get lighter as we go. And then we bring our darker color in and we come back the other way. Or you can start from this side, but just make sure you press lightly at that side and press darker as you go along. And if you wanna make it stronger, go back in another layer. And there we have a nice smooth gradient between colors. Now, let me just show you for comparison, if we decide to add black. Now black against the yellow is way too different that it just doesn't work. But you might find with some of your darker colors, if you are gentle with the black and go lightly, you can create an okay shadow or an okay gradient. Oops, put too hard there, using the black. So the black doesn't blend as well into the other colors, which is why it's good to have those transitional colors in between, but it can still achieve a good effect if you don't have a big variety of colors. Now, when it comes to doing this with markers, there are some markers out there, especially alcohol markers. Maybe you've heard of Copic markers, which are the most famous alcohol markers that blend awesomely just on their own. But if you're, you've got cheaper markers or if you've got some that aren't alcohol based, they're probably not gonna be as easy to blend together. So a little trick that I like to use is actually to put down a layer of marker and then use my pencils for the shading. The thing I love about using markers and pencils together is that you get the brightness and the vibrancy of the markers, but you still get the flexibility and the ability to shade and do gradients from the pencils. Now, when it comes to using this in your coloring pages, I showed you a few examples at the start, but let's have another quick look at the different ways that you can use those gradients now that you know how they're done. So back to this picture here, this was done with markers and I've colored in the blue background and then I've come back and done the darker edge around everything and blended that into the blue. So that is one way to use this. I also used it on these leaves to create darker edges on some and not on others. Now notice with this, I haven't followed any particular light source or any rules. I've just picked different sections to make slightly darker and it still looks very effective. So with this one, I've simply started with white at the top and then I've got a light color in the middle and a dark color at the bottom. And for each letter, I've just blended them down to create that look. I've also used a darker edge around the leaves and blended that back into the lighter color in the middle of the leaf. Here are two other examples that are quite different. In this case, I haven't gone for darker colors. I've actually gone for colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, otherwise known as analogous colors. Now, I actually did a video on this recently teaching you all the different color harmonies, so you can check that out. But analogous colors are colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. And when it comes to gradients, they can blend really nicely together to create a very different look, but still looking good. So in this example, I have a blue and I have a purple and I have a pink and I have blended those together in each of these. Now you'll notice when it goes from the blue to pink, it's a little bit, doesn't look quite as good, but when it includes the purple in between, it blends quite easily. And in this background, all I've done, and I haven't actually finished this yet, 
I've done patches of these colors and then I've blended the patches together by going lighter and then I've come back over some of the areas and gone darker to get that really bold color. Now tip number two, if you've watched a few of my recent videos, you will already be aware, well aware of this tip and that is using a white pen to add highlights. Now I'm not going to go in depth now on how to use the white pen because I've covered that in a different video, which you can see right here. Instead, I just wanna show you some quick examples of how this can bring a page to life. So in this first picture here, I have some roses and I've used the white pen around the rim of each of the roses and it just makes that color pop. In this example, I've just added to the patterns in the background by adding little dots just in different areas. And this was really one I just experimented and I just went for it. And I probably went a little bit overkill with the white pen, but it was a lot of fun. And it has made the background look very festive, very interesting. And if you look closely here, you can see I also applied our first tip, which was adding a slight gradient on the lettering. So there's a very slight orange pencil around my white marker here on all these words. And this example you might recognize from my previous video, I used a white pen around all of the lettering. I also used a white pen to make my bubbles look way more interesting and to give them a little bit of a sparkle. So to just give you a really brief example, let's grab a page here. And if you watched the last video, you would know that one of my tips is always to make a copy of your page so that you don't necessarily mess up the original. This is perfect for if you wanna try a new technique or you're not really sure if what you're about to do is something you wanna keep. <laughs> it's always good to make a copy just to do a test run. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. So in this example, I'm simply taking a white pen and I'm adding a spot in roughly the same area on all these circles to create the illusion that it has a light shining on it. I'm also just adding some dots here just for a bit of a fun pattern. You can outline some edges on some of the different sections, especially if you're, you're coloring a pattern or a mandala. This is a really good little trick just to make certain colors stand out. And you can even add some lines or add some patterns, especially if you've got big areas of the same color. So tip number three is pop down the white markers and pull out your black markers because our coloring pages are just the start. You can add to them. You can add your own patterns. You can add your own details. Look, I'll be honest, not every artist will like you doing this, but it is a great way to make a simple or even a kid's coloring page into a very interesting adult coloring page. So the easiest version of this is just adding dots. Like we did with the white pen, adding some dots with a black pen can add a little bit of extra interest to an image. Or you can add patterns, you can add shapes, you can even draw more elements. So maybe you've got a picture that has flowers and you can draw your own flowers as well by copying the style. Just be careful that you don't go overboard. If you've got a coloring page like this one that's already quite busy, probably not the best example to use. Let's try one that's a little bit more simple. Now in an example like this, we have a lot more big areas that we can work with. So we can create patterns even just by doing things like zigzags in the background, and then you can actually color those in. So they essentially become a part of the coloring page. So we can add patterns to big areas with just simple shapes, lines, circles, squares, squiggles, all of that can make very interesting patterns in our backgrounds. Now there are two important considerations when using a black pen. The first is check the size of your pen. Some pens are thicker and some are thinner. Now, what is the right pen for you will depend on the page you're using because some coloring pages have thicker or thinner lines. Now, if your coloring page has thick lines and you add details in thin lines, that can look quite good. But if you do it the other way around and use a thick pen on thin lines, it can overpower the image. The second tip is to make sure that you test your black pens on a blank piece of paper first and not just test your pens, but test whatever medium you're going to color with. So if you're planning on using the black pen and then coloring it in with pencils, try that on a blank piece of paper because some pens will run when you add other colors to them. Most pencils should be fine, but in, especially when you're using markers, some markers will add moisture to the black pen lines and will actually bleed into your artwork really good way to mess up your picture. So try that first or alternatively, you might find that you can actually add 
the black lines at the very end after you've done all your coloring. Now the next step is to add patterns and textures. Now in some coloring pages, there will be obvious opportunities for this. For example, if you're coloring someone wearing a dress, you could create a fabric texture on the dress. If you're coloring something that has a glass object in it, then you might try to create and mimic that glass texture. But you can also apply this to general things as well. So I have put together a YouTube playlist and a Pinterest board to help you with this because there are endless opportunities for different patterns and textures. Basically, anything that you look at in real life has some kind of pattern or texture to it and therefore you can create that in your coloring pages. So we're talking wood, stone, bricks, fur, skin, hair, glass, water, metal, gold. There are so many different effects, so many different things that you can add to your coloring pages. So check out that Pinterest board that I'll pop a link to in the description and that playlist that I'll pop a link to as well that both have a ton of tutorials to get you started on a whole range of options. Now, some textures are a lot easier than others. There are advanced, realistic, crazy levels of complicated stuff that is like pro that just most beginners and even me like just don't even go there. <laughs> but there are a lot of ways that we can create cool effects as well. And sometimes that's not necessarily learning how to draw something like glass with colored pencils. We can also use other mediums to create fun textures to bring our pages to life. One example is actually using other mediums like gel pens or metallic pens or different things with glitter in them to add a bit of a sparkle or a bit of a glow to our coloring pages. So you can buy gold and silver markers or paint pens and you can use them in the same way that we used our white pens to just add accents or to color in certain sections. Same thing goes for gel pens. If you have a glitter gel pens, obviously you can add just a layer of glitter on different areas of your coloring pages. So you can also use other mediums that aren't traditionally made for coloring. So as an example, if you're wanting a glitter effect but you don't necessarily want a house full of glitter, you can use a glitter eyeshadow and just lightly put a layer on top of your artwork. I'm doing a very clumsy job of this here, <laughs> making a bit of a mess. Probably should use a brush, that would maybe be a better option, but you can see that it just adds a little bit of interest to the words and makes them sparkly. So when it comes to adding textures, you can get creative. You can start with some basic stuff. In fact, I recommend looking on Pinterest or checking out the playlist I've put together to find some tutorials that seem like something you can handle. And as you try more and more different textures, it will get easier and easier and you can start trying things that are a little bit more complicated. So my final tip is to use a color palette. Now, when it comes to choosing colors that look good together, you have a few options. You can learn to use the color wheel. And in fact, if that interests you, I have a video here that you can check out to learn how different colors work well together. Or you can just wing it and pick colors and hope for the best. And look, for some of us that works. Some people just have a great eye for what looks good and what doesn't. But I can tell you that in my experience, when I do that, I end up reverting back to the same colors over and over. And I can tell which colors I use a lot because they are my shortest pencils. <laughs> Instead, if you use a color palette, which is, which is the other option, you can end up with a whole bunch of inspiration. You can find new colors that you haven't tried before. You can maybe test yourself and you might be surprised at what you find. So this picture here, I actually used this color palette from the color catalog. Now, as you can see, I haven't used the colors exactly. And that's something important to consider when using a color palette. They are a guide. They are a starting point. They are, you're not going to win some award for getting the colors the most accurate and you're not going to be criticized if you don't match them perfectly. These are just a starting point. Now, in this example, I have used the general inspiration of this palette to create this page. You can see I've used the pinks. I've used the yellow here. I couldn't find an orange that in my markers when I did this one that was close enough. So I decided to pull the orange out because you can do that. I then found the green and I decided to pick both a light and a dark green because again, we can do that. And then instead of the blue, I decided to go a little bit more towards the green and I kind of went with a teal because if you know me, I really like teal. So any excuse to use it, that's a bit naughty after just telling you to try different colors. <laughs> But in this case, I think it worked really well and it's not that different to the color that was on the original palette. 
So if you are using the color catalog, you can start with either a color or the way that I like to do it is to use the keywords. So whatever coloring page that you're coloring, if you're coloring something that's a forest scene, you can actually find a whole bunch of ideas here based on forest as a keyword. From there, you can pick something that goes for the kind of mood you want, because as we know, different colors can create different moods, can make people feel happy or warm, make people feel scared or make people feel curious and color can do amazing things. So looking at these pictures can give you a bit of insight into which colors work well together to create a specific look. So if I were wanting an autumn themed page, I could take this palette and then what I want to do is go through my pencils and find the best match for each of these colors. So you can print this page out or you can just use a scrap piece of paper and just pick your first color and grab your pencils until you find one that you think is the best match. Now I do have in a few weeks, I'm going to be releasing an add on to this color catalog called the color catalog companion. And in that I will give you all of the Prismacolor code numbers and the Copic marker numbers and the Faber-Castell polychromos numbers that I believe are the closest match to all of the palettes in both color catalogs, volume one and two. So keep an eye out for that. I'll post it in the description below when it is available. In the meantime, you can simply test your colors until you find the one that you think is the best match. So these are the final pencils that I've chosen that I think are the best match for this. And I think looking at this now, this one is probably not quite red enough. And so the rest of it looks quite good, but I might try and find a better red for this color. But this palette does look quite good together, even though I haven't matched them 100% the same. Now, once you've chosen your five main colors, you can get a bigger palette by using some of those things we talked about in our first tip in finding a darker or lighter version of each color so that within each of these colors, you can have your own gradients and your own shades to make your color range a little bit bigger. So I just wanted to show you one final picture where I have taken all of these things we've talked about and I've put them together. In this picture here, I have taken this coloring page and I have done a lot with it. Now you might look at this and go, oh, that looks too advanced, but let's just break it down quickly. First, we have our words here. Now you can see I've got a dark blue and a lighter blue on my words to create a bit of a 3D look. In the background, we've got a dark blue and it is blending. We've done a gradient here into the white. So that's something you can do. We've just taught you that. So in the butterfly, I used a blue pen, much like I showed you how to use a black pen to add extra details in the wings. These butterflies, as you can see, were actually completely plain and we've added all those details and a gradient behind them. You can see here, I've added lots of white, just dots everywhere to create a bit of a sparkling effect. And I've added a few stars as well. Lots and lots of dots all over her hair to make it seem like this fantasy kind of look. And then if you look at the hair closely, now this obviously is a little bit more complex, but this is a texture I have created. So I've used gradients from dark to light, and then I've used a pencil. This is actually markers with pencils on top to create just some very fine lines to create the appearance of hair. And really all that I've done here is gone from dark to light to dark to light. And I kind of just made it up as I went along. I didn't really follow a particular system, but I did do darker in some areas that I thought maybe wouldn't get as much light. They wouldn't have any kind of shine. And that has created the illusion of hair. Looking at her face now, shading her face is a little bit more complicated, but essentially we're just doing darker colors in the places where we naturally think that shadows fall. Definitely helps to use a reference photo or look at a picture of an actual face when you're doing this to see which areas are darker and which are lighter and color it accordingly. And I used a color palette for this one too. As much as the skin and hair feels like fairly obvious choices for me, I did use this to find that the brown works really well with blue. And while my blue isn't the same, this was my inspiration to try and find the colors that worked well. So as you can see, this page is an example of maybe something that's a little bit more advanced, but when you break it down, it's something that we actually all can do. You can do this if you just learn these little tips step-by-step, step, practice lots, and you'll be able to create something amazing. If you found this video helpful, it would mean so much to me if you would share it with a friend. Please like this video and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you'll find out when I release my next tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this helpful. Bye.